everyone. Welcome back to Sharon Cullen Art. Today I'm doing a tiny tutorial. I'm not sure which day this is coming out, if I'm going to have it out before midnight tonight, which is Tuesday, or if it will be a tiny Wednesday tutorial or a tiny Thursday tutorial. I don't know. Uh, it depends on my editing and everything. Now, I'm going to go a little bit bigger today. Uh, I wanted to kill a couple birds with one stone. I hate that, that whole saying. Who Whoever invented that? Kill two birds with one stone. That's horrible. But anyway, I'm going to do two things at one time. Somebody asked for greeting cards in, in the Tiny Tuesday tutorials. So I'm going to do a greeting card today. I also had some thank you cards that I need to get done. And um, also, I'm going to try to get an idea in that was a request. I had requests for more landscapes, for pumpkins, for gnarly trees, for for haunted houses, for regular houses, um, you name it, flowers, all sorts of stuff. Well, what I'm doing right here is I had just cut up some bee paper um, from one of my many, many rolls. I think I have five rolls now, but uh, I just cut up a bunch of six by nine pieces of paper, and it's still a little bit round, actually. And I'm going to go ahead and fold my paper in half. Bee paper doesn't have much tooth. So you, you may have trouble finding which side is the right side if you're like me. And when I fold, I never fold from back here because that's how you get uneven edges. So I always take my fold, line it up, and sometimes I'll take my front fold and go a little bit old, over so that it's easier to find the edge to pick up the card. But um, with a deckled edge, that shouldn't be a problem. Then I take my bone folder, which is not bone, it's plastic, and I... This edge needs to come forward though. What I do then is I take it like this and I push back to get my fold. And that way my fold is even all the way across. And then I just tighten the fold by pushing back a little more. Once I get that fold there, then I make it crisp. And that's all there is to it. Now to do the card, I wanna protect the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it down Okay, so one of the requests that I had for a video was pumpkins. So today we're going to be doing some pumpkins. <clears throat> I've got a ton of them. Of course, they're not in front of me right now. They should be, but they're not. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a little um, pumpkin patch kind of a thing. Not a patch, but a few pumpkins together. And they don't have to be perfectly shaped. Um, I have some tall ones, I have short ones, I have white white ones, orange ones, black ones, which are really a dark green. They look like acorn squash. Um, I've got these little flat ones. So what I'm going to do is start with smaller ones in front, and then I'm going to build to the back. I'm starting in the front because I don't want my lines to overlap. Now, if you'd rather not draw on your card, you can draw on a piece of tracing paper and then add it to your paper later. Um, in fact, why don't I show you how that would be done? Okay, well, I don't seem to have any tracing paper, but what I have is some vellum, which is also translucent paper, but um, it's a lot more expensive. But, but we're going to go ahead and use this, and then what I will go ahead and do here is draw on my pumpkins. I'm going to keep my card on the back here and just draw lightly because I want to know what size it is. In fact, I could just do this just so I know not to go outside of these lines, roughly. Don't have to be straight or anything like that. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna go ahead and draw in some pumpkins. I'm gonna have some little, little orange ones here that are stubby. And kind of flat on the bottom like that. And then you can put the striping in. You want to leave room for the top. Like that. And then I'm going to do another one, which is a little bigger. And they don't have to be 
symmetrical or anything like that. In fact, this is coming out too far forward. I've got to be behind this line when I'm drawing it. So what I'm going to do then is draw this one back further. I can start at the bottom even. And so that it looks like it's sitting behind this one, I can make the base of this one come up just slightly higher. And I will bring it out like this. And then I'm going to leave my spot for my top and then my stripes. And I'm going to bring my top up this way. So now I've got my pumpkins on here, and they can be as sloppy or as neat as you want them to be. Um, but once you've got them on, then go on to the back side of your paper and take a soft pencil, not an HB or 2A. I got a, I don't know what this is. It's a very dark pencil, but it's a woodless one, and it was getting short, so I put it in an extender. And I'm just going to go ahead on the back of this. And you may have wanted to go over the front with a different color lead, but it shouldn't really matter. So you just go over it like this. Nice and heavy so that it'll transfer to your paper. Now you could use graphite paper, but I'll tell you, graphite paper can be really difficult to remove if you don't want it on there anymore. So now I'm going to line this up to where I want it. I'm going to keep mine up a little bit because I think I'm going to put some grasses underneath. So this is where I want my thing. And in order to keep the paper from moving, I'm going to tape it down just so that it stays put and my pumpkins are not sideways on my paper. So I will just put that up there to keep it still. And now I'm going to take a different color only because it's easier for me to go over this and know where I've been. And if, don't tape it down on all four sides because you'll need to lift and peek every now and then. And I'm just going to go over this like this. And just trace it. Now I missed a spot here, but that shouldn't matter because I'll be able to know where my paper or where my pumpkin's going. And with the red pencil, I can see what I've drawn. You can use a ballpoint pen. Just be careful. Put enough lead down on the back or graphite down on the back um, that you're not having to press so hard into your paper. Uh, if you're a lefty like me, I know lefties, we tend to press hard for some reason. Um, but if you press too hard, you're going to leave indentations on your paper. Your paint will flow into those lines, which would be nice because we'll need that for our pumpkin. But um, I don't suggest that. <laughs> okay, there's that piece and that piece. Let me just check it. We're doing good here. Now I'm going to go ahead. So now I've got everything down, I think. I'm just going to check. Yep, that looks good. So I'm going to take that off and set it aside. We're done with that. Unless you plan to make a lot of them, then you can just keep repeating that. I don't like the shape of this. This is just a personal thing. Silly, but I want to switch it a little bit. So I'm going to bring it out here a little bit. I wanted a little more curve on that pumpkin. If you put more curve on the top like this, then your pumpkin's going to have that rounded, in you know, rounded top on it, which I kind of wanted to do on this. So at least on these back ones. The front, obviously, you can't do that so much on, but you can on the back. There we go. All 
Alrighty. So now I've got that all done and I got a little bit of extra graphite on here that's turning my paper a little gray. Somebody once asked me uh, recently in the comments, she said, why do you use a HB or 2H pencil, whichever it was I said, I use both. Um, and my reason for that is because I drag my hand all over the place and I get graphite everywhere. Um, and I don't like that look. I suppose if I was using my um, graphitants from my video last week, uh, then I wouldn't have a problem with it. But, but for this, yes. Okay, so now I'm setting this aside. I don't need it anymore. I'm going to go ahead and get my colors. And the colors I plan on using today, and this is the other thing. Somebody was wondering about where I get these cups for my palette. This is my palette, and it's pretty big. So these cups come from inside of that. And today I'm going to be grabbing my Permanent Yellow Deep. And I'm going to need my Alizarin Crimson. I use Permanent Alizarin. Oops, I'm sorry. I got my finger over the lens. Yeah. That's great. Um, I use Permanent Alizarin Crimson. Regular Aliz Alizarin Crimson is not light fast. And then I'm going to go ahead and use Sap Green. If you don't have it, just use, use a more lemony yellow and some ultramarine blue and you'll be all set. Or you can use your um, phthalo and a different yellow, whatever. But those are the only three colors we're going to need today for everything. So these are the only three colors we should be using today or needing today. You can use whatever you want, but that's all I am going to need. Now I'm going to take a number six brush. You can go, actually I might even go a little bit bigger to start so I can cover my paper. Uh, this is an 8 Da Vinci, and I've got a 6 Da Vinci. They're very different in size, but um, I think one's a Maestro and one's a Harbin. Yeah, Harbin and Maestro, they're a little bit different different series. So what I'm going to do is mix up some paints. I'm just going to put my yellow in, uh, mix some in a well so that I have all the colors ready for me when I'm needing them. And I can add more as I go, but because this probably won't be enough. And I'm going to leave this well next to my red empty because I want to mix the two colors together eventually. But I do want to keep the red alone. I'll need that as well. And I'll show you what I'm going to do with that. And then over here, I will take my green. Okay. Set those all aside. Now, I'm going to grab my brush here with a little bit of yellow. I want to have my brush nice and wet. And I'm just going to kind of water down that yellow a bit. And I'm just going to cover this pumpkin. Now, I need a light source. I think I will have the light source coming across this way, hitting all of the pumpkins. So I'm going to go ahead in with my yellow, but I'm going to leave a little bit of the area white for now over here so that I have good reflection on this pumpkin. Being careful not to get this one down here because it's going to be a one of those striped pumpkins. My girlfriend brought me so many pumpkins, and then she brought me this beautiful bouquet of of um fall flowers, which are my favorites, all the different types of mums and everything. So I'll be doing a painting with those pretty soon. Um, now I want a couple other orange ones. I'm going to do, I think I'll do both of these in back as orange pumpkins. So One might be like more of the tangerine style. They call them tangerine pumpkins, a little bit brighter, and then the other one can be a little darker. And actually, instead of the light coming this way, it's going to be kind of coming from the forward angle. And then on these, I'm going to water the yellow down even more so that they almost appear, it'll appear almost white. Uh, this one I want to make like a white pumpkin. And I'm going to take some of that off because that's too bright. Getting a little bit of bleeding here, which is okay, but 
There we go. And now I want to leave these two in front alone for now. And I'm going to go back into my yellow. And I'm going to darken it at the bottom. And a little bit in the mid area. A lot over here. I'm going to start adding a little red in, and I'm going to mix my red and my yellow. I'm dropping on all of this paint while it's wet, so we're doing a wet into wet technique. Adding a little red to the brush. Whoops, too much. I think I'm going to switch over to my smaller brush. And the reason for that is because um, I can get more control over how much water. It's all oh, shoot, you guys. Well, that one might end up orange now. <laughs> Let me try to scrub that off. Colors are in crimson is going to stain really well. Might not be too bad. I'm going to take my dryer to it over here. That one will probably end up orange because I got a stain on the front, but we'll see. Um, I'm going to continue in with my darker color. Just kind of sweeping this color up. Now I want to get back to this reflection too. And what we're going to do here... is I'm going to rinse my brush out real good, keep it damp, and I'm just going to kind of sweep the color in. Just lightly sweep it in. There we go. And it's going to kind of bleed toward the center. And that will give us our reflection. See how I did that? Okay, now I'm going to go back in with my red down at the bottom. This is just straight alizarin crimson. Not too super strong, but pretty strong. Sweeping this up. Darkening this pumpkin, but I do want to leave a little bit of yellow at the top. Especially toward the lighter side. but there's going to be a bit of light from the top of the pumpkin anyway coming down. So I wanna keep a lot of this lighter. And then I'm just gonna keep deepening the bottom. That noise that sounds like a plane is actually my heater <laughs> in my studio here. It's cold, I'm back to putting the heat on. I still have running water though, which is good. Uh, I need more yellow here for my other pumpkin. I'm going to keep this over here, and I'm going to do the same thing again with this one. It looks like this is part of my pumpkin over there. I think it is, and I messed up. Is that part of my pumpkin? It looks like it should be right here. Yeah, I'm just going to move that over and bring that over to this side. That looks a little bit better. This one's still a little wet to be going in with the uh, stripes yet. So we're going to let that dry a bit. But eventually we'll put these stripes in with red like this. We'll just stripe them in. But this is going to spread right now. And while it's still wet, I want to take some green 
and I'm going to take my sap green over here and I'm going to go into this. And if it bleeds a little bit, that's great because they start to turn brown. And that's what I want it to do. And if it doesn't turn brown enough, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of my ready orange kind of color of my alizarin crimson and mix it in with my green. And that will give me the color that I need. Um, my alizarin crimson is getting a little dulled down here, so I'm going to add a little bit more and add that into my green a little bit more so it makes it a darker brown. There, now it's getting darker. That's what I wanted. And I like the little bit of green on top. It doesn't all have to be that way, but I kind of like that. So I'm going to leave it. And I'm going to do the same thing over here with this white area. And this one disappeared, so I'm going to kind of bring it back by just scrubbing out a little bit of that color while I can. There's not much alizarin there, so it'll scrub well, but... If there was a lot more red, it would not come out very well. So we'll leave that like that. Now I'm going to add a little more red at the bottom of this. There. And it looks like I went out of the line here. So I'm just going to move my pumpkin over a little bit and make it a little bit rounder. There we go. And that's how you fix that mistake. Okay. Now, I don't want to do too much with this handle because this pumpkin's still wet and my green is going to bleed into it. So, in order to get the effect, if I wanted that over here, which I don't need that much, um, I'm just going to add a little more yellow up here at the top. There we go. Um, if I wanted that effect, I'd have to do it after the fact and then re-wet my paper, which you can do. And that's fine. But I'm going to go ahead and let these get almost dry. Not quite dry, but almost dry. And then we'll meet back. Okay, I think I'm just about there. My paper is still kind of puffy. So it's not quite dry yet. Now I'm going to take my alizarin crimson on its own at the bottom. I'm starting at the bottom because I don't know how dark this is going to look. Looks okay but it's still spreading a little bit. So this might be too, this might be too early to be doing this. Now well, that one wasn't so bad, but this side, I don't like the way it's bleeding out of the line. So I'm gonna wait a little bit on that. How about this one? That one might be a little bit drier. That's strange. Maybe I just didn't use as much water on it. Now I'm taking alizarin crimson on this one as well. At least for the bottom portion. That one's drier. I could take that one all the way to the top. I normally wouldn't draw these on. I like to have the liberty of moving them however I want as I'm painting. So if you don't need the pencil sketch, don't put it in there. Now I'm taking some of my alizarin crimson here. I'm out. i got to make some more. Um, I'm going to take it. I don't want it that strong. I'll mix it in with this a little bit. But I want to put it up here. And that will help to give it some indentation. I'm taking more of the green, though, and I'm going to drop it in there, too, which is going to brown it up at the top, I think. Just painting it up a little bit or scrubbing it back a little bit. I don't want it that brown. Changed my mind. Okay, I gotta wait a little bit. And now that got a little dull, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of the yellow back in to vibrant, make it vibrant again. 
I'm going to draw that red, that yellow down. And then we'll go back with the red again in a little bit. Over on this one, I want to add more color as well. I'm going to go in again with my yellow. Then a little bit with the orangey color. It's going to be a little bit darker on this side. Keeping it lower on this side. Oh, when did I do that? Did I just do this right now? That's not good. Shoot, people. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> Can I just do that? Well, this card isn't going to anybody. I'm going to have to redo it. Okay. Okay, well, a couple days have passed. <laughs> and I was just thinking this morning. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to fit everything back on my desk again here. I've been moving stuff around. Um, I was just thinking this morning that about this mess up that I have here. I'm going to zoom in so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. These kinds of things happen. Somehow I splashed, and I'll go back and I'll see it in the video, I'm sure. I splashed some orange right here, and I tried to scrub it out, and it's just not happening. And I said, oh, well, maybe I'll put a sky back there or some grass or whatever. What I'm going to do is add another pumpkin behind this other one. And that's how I'm going to solve this problem. I'm just going to go like this and do that. So now, oops, I don't have an eraser on that pencil. See, I'm getting used to my erasers here. Where is my natural? There it is. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and do that. And then this is going to be where my thingajig will be, my little stalk. And take that out of the background. There we go. And now I've covered up my orange by doing that. And then I can just do that there. So now I've got another pumpkin in there and all is well with the world. And I've gotten rid of the orange spot. There is a little orange dot over here, but I'm going to have some grass go in and that should be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and continue on with my painting now. Of course, everything's dried. It's, it's been a couple days and I'm sorry again for this going up so late. I'm still using the same colors that are on my palette. They're dry. I'm just going to give them a little bit of water so that I can reconstitute them here. I believe these colors are both the same. But I'm just going to go ahead in with my um, alizarin crimson, and I want to get those lines in on the pumpkin a little bit better. And I'm still using a size 6. I think I may go to my size 0 if I need to, but... I don't need to. And I do want to add some of that red in here because it's going to give it some of the depth on that pumpkin. These stripes look real vibrant right now, but they're going to change. I'm going to add a little more color to this. To get the top wet so I can soften these edges and that will allow them to bleed upward a little bit but not too much. This part's dry here. There we go. And even this area here I want it to be a gradual change. Be careful with the amount of water on your brush. It's very easy to go over and then you end up with a bloom and you don't want to do that. So I'm going to do the same thing with this pumpkin right here. I want to make more red. So I'm going to wet the whole bottom half. I'm going to have to redefine the edge of that pumpkin again, which is fine. But um, I'm going to go in with my 
mixture of alizarin crimson and the bit of orange that I had left on my palette. I think it's great to mix your own oranges for this. I do have an orange that I don't particularly care for um, <clears throat> that would work very well, but um, it's semi-transparent and you can get more variety of value in your oranges by doing it this way. And it's a lot more fun too. Now my last orange one I'm gonna have is gonna be in the middle here. And I'm going to do the same thing. I don't need as much of a glare. Well, maybe I do because I said it's coming down from the front, this um, reflection or the light. So I guess I will have a little bit of light there. I'm going to go again in with my yellow just as I have before. Paint my yellow in. I've got a little too much water on here, so I'm picking it up first. There we go. Part of the problem is, is that I wet the paint in the palette and I got a little too much water in there. There we go. I'm adding a little more pigment to it. Well, I just want you to know that the reason this is late is because I have health problems and I have a plethora of them and um, it's no fun but that's my life and I deal with it. But there are days that I can't paint, which is why it, it, previously I had never committed to certain days for my videos to come out. If I had done that, um, I would have screwed myself over basically, which is what I did. I basically screwed myself over. Um, I'm going in with some of my Pyrenone Orange which is that semi-transparent I told you about. I want to get a different color than the other oranges. And this one is more tangerine-like, like I was talking about. So I'm just going to stick with it like that. I think that'll be good. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and let all of this dry because I want to work on these white pumpkins. Actually, let's work on this back one while I got it here. The one, my mess up. This mess up will be perfect. Now, nobody will know, except for the person who's going to receive it, who also follows me on YouTube. Ah, I've got a couple more. Um, I, think I got three more thank yous I have to write. Limited palettes are, are very nice to work with. Um, they're fun because you can come up with these, oh, what am I going to do? How am I going to make my brown? Or whatever the case may be. I'm losing a little bit of my yellow there, so I'm going to put some of that yellow back in. And you'll find that certain colors will push other colors away. Play with it on some watercolor paper and you can see like you'll drop a color on top of another one that's wet on your paper and you'll see one of them dominate and push the other one out. It just has to do with the pigments. It's very interesting though to, to kind of watch it happen. You can play around with them. And they can be different from from company to company, depending on which pigments they use to mix their colors. Like a Payne's Gray is going to be different in one one uh, company from another. So, and That's not strong enough. There we go. That might be too dry, though. did bleed a little at the bottom that's okay I'll just fix it later can't do it with that brush anyway because that's too long that was a rigor 
I'm just going to pull some of this red back so it's not too, too strong, and I don't want to bloom. I'm losing my reflection a little bit, but that's okay also. Now on this one, um, let's go ahead and let these dry a minute. Okay, I'm going to go back into the top here, and I'm going to add my little shadow areas on this one as well. Maybe I didn't let that dry long enough. Looks that way. Let me just pick that up a bit. Get rid of that. And we'll let that one dry a little longer. Something else I noticed in my drawing that I've kind of uh, done wrong in my eyes is I want some more of this in the back behind the pumpkin. Now you don't have to, it just depends on the on the um, perspective that you're using. But I'm just going to add a little bit more like that. And this one's a little bit wrong. I'm going to change that. I don't have to bring it down so far. I'm just going to go like this. There. Get rid of that line I don't like. Okay. If you lose the point on your brush, like I came in and it was flat like this, that's not good for me. So I just roll it on my palette. If you're a beginner and you're not aware of that, that's just a little trick that we do to gain control of the brush again. I'm using sables today which hold a lot more water. It's a lot easier to control a synthetic brush. But after you use sables for a while, then um, <clears throat> it can get hard to use the synthetics because then they're too dry. Go ahead and put this in. Okay, and I want to go ahead and work on my, um, I need a little more yellow in this. This orange is too orange. Don't like that. It's not matching the upper part of the pumpkin over here, so I'm just going to lift a little bit of the color off. There, that's better. That's better. Now I got the yellow back again. All right. Um, now on these bottom ones, I had kind of a yellow color. What I'm going to do is just touch my brush into some yellow. I'm going to keep it very, very, very dilute. Very dilute, almost like a beige. For my white pumpkins, they're not totally white, white. Well, they're pretty white but they get kind of a beige look and sometimes they're a little translucent and you can see inside them. Now these pumpkins though, because white can be kind of boring to paint, I'm gonna put the little stripies on them. Some have orange stripies, some have green stripes, but they're not really truly stripes. They're more like dots, you know? So um, I'm going to grab my size zero brush just because these are such small pumpkins. This is a zero Da Vinci Maestro, also a sable brush. Um, and I'm going to go in with a little stronger pigment, my green. Just mixing it on with the other portion there. And this is damp. I want to see how much spreading of color I'm going to have because I'm just going to dot down the middle and I do want it to spread, but I don't want it to overspread so that the whole pumpkin is green. I'm just going to dab up some color there. There we go. And then this one. And that way it can spread out. And these, this green will kind of fade a bit. And then we'll go back in with some more green. And that green will be 
deeper in value. Uh, so now I'm bringing this down a little bit wider on the bottom. They tend to have more color at the base. It's just what I've been seeing on mine. And I don't have them in front of me. I'm just doing this from memory. This one, I think I'm gonna do some orange. I'm gonna take some of my Perinone orange. Let me make sure that the white ones do have orange. The only one, I only have the green, so. They do make them with, with um, they're called mini tiger pumpkins, and they look like this. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see. Turn my brightness up here so you can see them better. See, they look like this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on some, and here's some of the green ones. This one seems to have dried a little bit more. I'm just gonna wet my brush a little bit, take some of that pigment off, and make them a little bit wider at the bottom. I'm gonna do a couple speckles along the middle, but mostly along the stripes of the pumpkin like they are. Now I need to put the, the um, tops on these little pumpkins. So again, I'm just going to take, I'm just taking some of my orange and mixing it with this green here. Um, that'll be part of my brown, but I'm going to go in with the green first down here like I did on the other ones, just like this. And then I'm gonna marry that orange into it, making it brown. Now I may have to go over this a couple of times just to deepen the value because of the pumpkins behind it. Okay, we're dry now. And you see we've lost some vibrancy in our brown. Now take some of my alizarin crimson and just mix it on my palette into this area here that's a little bit wetter, but I want it nice and deep, very deep, concentrated. And I'm gonna take some of this green over here. There we go, see how that does? Nope, it's not enough. I need some strength to that pigment. There we go. Now we got a nice brown. This is a red brown, but I think it'll darken um, things up a little better. There we go. Some of these have twisty ones, these twisty vines. None of mine had twisting vines. I think it just depends on the type of pumpkin you get. I'm not sure. I should ask my girlfriend's niece. But, um, yeah. Some of them are twisty like corkscrews, and these are not. None of mine came twisty like that. I did get some knucklehead ones, though, and I should have painted a couple of those. And I maybe I will, because, you know, we got a lot of October left. Oh, Inktober starts today, too. Holy cow. I don't know if I can do it. Eh, I'll do it. I'll, I'll try to do it. <laughs> okay, well, happy Inktober. <coughs> today is October 1st. Now I'm going to take some, I'm just wetting a, a bigger brush here. This is a number 10. You can take whatever size you want. I'm mixing into the green that I had on here that's going to be a little bit light. And I'm just going to brush it underneath my pumpkins. They're sitting in the grass. I'm going to bring this grass up behind. I'm going to be putting blades of grass in as well, but this I want I want to take the white of the paper away. So that's what I'm doing here. In fact, I might take some yellow. Some of my yellow here and just it's a warm yellow, but I'm just going to put it in here anyway. It'll make it more of an olivey color. I've got a little red on here. I'm trying to go around so that I don't make it orange or it will really be olivey. But I just want to get a different color underneath. So, I'm trying to 
grab that. You can mix it on your palette if you'd like to. I, I tend to mix on the paper a lot. I'm going to go ahead and grab my rigger or other brush, something thin. Here's a rigger that is a number one. This is a silver black velvet. This is squirrel. I'm going to take some of my concentrated um, sap green, and this is going to spread because things aren't dry. So I'm just going to kind of wave it here and there. I hope I'm on, yeah, I am on camera. Okay. This is a really nice rigger. I love this rigger. This one's fairly new for me. I, I recently got it. I'll have a couple pieces of grass that will come up around the pumpkins, but right now I just want to get this wet grass covered. This is a little more concentrated, so I need to spread some of it over here, too. There we go. I think this is a little drier on, on this side. Making it a little bit darker under the pumpkin, like shadow. We're not going to have shadow on the grass, though, because remember where your light source is. You could have some back here if it were higher, but I just basically want to get underneath the pumpkin so that it shows that that area is a bit darker. And then, of course, I'll have some blades of grass coming up, like I said. There. And... Make sure you get all the way to the edges. Just wetting my brush because it's too concentrated here and I want to put some blades of grass up here. Making these very thin. Trying to get rid of the line. So I'm making some thickness at the base. And then I'm just going to spread this out again. I'm not going to have the grasses come up so much underneath as I will on the sides where there's no pressure on the grasses, you see. I come off my tape too so that I get the base underneath so these grasses in front may be shorter because they're coming in from the bottom of the card, you know what I mean? So I'm just going to bring some in from the tape. That way you're sure you're getting, you're not going to have a strange line at the bottom of your paper. Like, oh, that's where the tape was so they didn't put any grass there. You don't want that. Up here, I was thinking of leaving this white, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little bit of blue, maybe some cerulean, because it's a mild, mellow color. Um, actually, I want to wet my paper first, clean my brush really, really well, because sometimes I don't do that. And I'm not going to paint the whole sky in, but I just want to get some sky in, if you know what I mean. I'm not going to take it all the way to the grass either there. You can do any color background you want, really, but um, I just want to whip some blue in. Very pale. Very, very pale. Happy little sky. <laughs> there. And that's all there is to it. So I've given it some change in color. Just want to make sure I get into these crevices so I don't have a white circle going around my my pumpkins. Just trying to pick up a little more blue, but I don't want too much. Start at the top so that I can see. That's how I see how much strength I have. You can do it on a piece of scrap paper, but if I... If I want to add blue, and you know you you get lighter as you get lower, a lot of times if I'm not sure how much color I have, I'll start at the top just to see how blue it is, and then I'll work it down into the the bottom. 
and that's it. So, let's let this dry. I want to sign it. I'm going to use a color, probably the red. I'm going to use some alizarin crimson, and I want it nice and vibrant. So what I'm going to do is wet my brush here. You can also use your palette um, like this, and then just roll it in the paint. But that gets to be kind of hard to do. You do need a juicy brush, but what I do is I get my brush wet, and then I just slide some paint on there. But before putting pen to paper, I always have a little test strip to check because the first one is gonna drip some paint coming off. There it is. So now, I'm gonna, now I can do it. So find a dry spot, it's drier over here. I'm gonna put my name over here. my paper as much. Okay, so that is it for my card, and now I'm going to go ahead and write my sentiment inside, but there's another portion of this that we can do, and that is paint the envelopes. What I'll do with this one is I'm going to, I don't tape the edges down. You have to be very careful with these, but I'm just going to do a little pumpkin in the corner, grab some yellow with that red in there, I'm wiping off my brush to get the excess off, and I'm just going to paint this. Oh, look at it. It's kind of separating the red and the yellow. That is kind of cool. That's really kind of cool. And then you got to be very careful painting these because you will rip your envelope. cards and beautiful gifts and it, they're just wonderful and I love there's nothing better than receiving a card in the mail from somebody just a, I'm thinking of you card or get well or thank you or whatever it is so nice to receive a personal note and I'm not talking about the general you know like bridal shower wedding gift mandatory thank you kind of a card I'm just talking about an off-the-cuff just I wanted to take 10 minutes out of my day and do something nice for you. That is the best mail that anybody can receive. I mean, Amazon's great and all, but something personal like this is just awesome. So I wanted to tell you guys how much I do appreciate when you do send me cards. Um, it, has been, it has been so nice, and I appreciate it so much. And even the Get Wells for Pat, Pat is doing wonderfully. He's done with his cane. He's out shopping right now buying uh, lumber and doors and stuff so that we can finish our basement. Uh, it, it, it's just amazing how much he's recovered. He struggles at night because he's overdoing it. And he won't listen to me, but um, he's doing very well. It's not hurting him for his healing. It's just hurting him, <laughs> you know. So remember, be courageous. Paint with wild abandon. And most of all, be kind to each other. It is so nice when you're kind to somebody. It makes their day. So in this day and age when everybody is being so mean and hateful and evil and destructive, we need a little bit of kindness in the world. So be kind to each other. 
Take care, everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye.